So one common thing that we have to do with fractions or decimals is convert them back and forth. Sometimes we might have something given in inches in, in decimals and we need to convert it to fractions or fractions and convert it to decimals. The easiest way to convert those fractions to decimals, remember wherever we have something over something, and I'm using X and Y here to represent anything, but you could fill in, pick any number you want for X and Y. This is saying division, right? Every fraction is also division. We're saying, hey, this is X divided by Y. And that's one way to figure it out. So if I wanted to figure out what one quarter was or one over four, I could literally just do that division and it's a long division here. Or I could plug it into my calculator and I would know what that is as a fraction. Um, there's also some common ones that we're gonna see a lot. A quarter we use a lot and an easy way to remember that is it's 25 cents. We do this math all the time, right? We've been using quarters our entire life. So that's an easy one. One over three is one we see often. And this is 1.0.3 with a little line over the top. That little line there represents a uh, repeating decimal. So we're saying that's the same as if we put 0 0.333 and we just kept repeating that three. Um, one over five, we do often. This is also a really big tip. This is 20%. One over five is, uh, so one way to get your tip is just divide your entire bill by five. That's a cheap, uh, a really uh, tricky way, really quick way to get that uh, tip. If you're good at dividing by five, you can estimate your tip pretty quickly. Um, and one over eight, I like to think of one over eight, that's just half of this. If you notice, it's 12 point, if I did 12.5 times two, I would get 25. So 0.125 is an eighth, right? An eighth inch is often what we're measuring when we're working with uh, decimal inches. Um, it's pretty easy to measure an eighth. All right, so let's do a couple examples with adding and subtracting decimals here. I'm gonna write a couple of these down first, and then we will work them together. All right, class, so I started by writing these down on a separate sheet of paper, which is always, a, always the best place to start your math problems. Please start with this. Um, this will be part of your homework submission, so make sure that you always write down the problem first um, to make sure that you have it uh, correctly in your head. Um, if you make a mistake and you don't write it down, it's very easy to make conceptual errors just by not writing it down. So let's start with the first one here. So we've got 3 plus 0 0.100 plus 0 0.075 plus 0 0.004. So what I want to do here is I want to add all these together. And one thing I want to be really careful about is that I get the decimal places in the right place. This one is bigger than this seven here, right? Because of its location, that decimal place. So one thing I like to do with these is I'll often come over here. I'll just draw a little line here to separate these. And what I wanna do is actually line all these decimal places out. I'm gonna leave three out of this for a sec. I'm gonna line up 100. I'm gonna line up 0 0.075. I'm gonna line up 0 0.004. I'm going to add all those up. So I've got five plus four, that's going to be nine, seven. All of these are zero in that line. So I'm going to add those that way. And I've got one. So this is 0.179. And I've already added this one and this one and this one. The only thing left I have is this three. And if I have a number here without a decimal place, I can really kind of logically think about where to put this decimal. If I put the decimal right here in front, if I put it right here, it would be 0.3, and I know that would change the value. If I did three dot, that's where I want to put it. I want to put that decimal right here. That way, when I put this together, if I've got three dot and I've got this part, I could put this three up here, and that means I would have 3.179. And that's one way to do it. You can totally do this by lining up the decimals. I think that's a great way to start. Now, if you have some more practice with this, or you feel more comfortable, if you know that all of these have the same number of decimal places, you can just add the numbers that are there. Um, oftentimes in uh, machining, if you're machining precision metal parts, we'll talk about these as thou, right? The decimal place is one, two, three. That would be thousand, or there's three decimal places, which there means there's three zeros. 
each of those is one over a thousand pieces. So this would be point, this would be 100 thou, this would be 75 thou, and this would be four. So adding these up would be 79, 179 thou. And we've got three over here, which is sitting on the other side. It's in the ones place. So it's three, three and 1.79 thousandths of an inch. There's no units for this, but I'm just making up inches in this particular case. All right, let's look at B. Now B, a little more challenging. We've got more decimals going on. What I would like to do is just line these up. I'm gonna line this up and say, okay, this is four three. This is 123.123. Now putting these together here, I would say, okay, well, that's going to be three. I like to add a zero here. Adding that trailing zero, remember, doesn't change our value, but it does make it easier for us to do this math. I've got zero plus three is three. Three plus two is five. Four plus one is five. And then I've got 125 right there. And this all together is 125,553, right? Now I could also add the zero here if that made more sense and make this all thou, right? It would be 123 thou plus 430. I add the zero there. And you could add it up, adding the number parts, two and 123, and adding the thou parts separately. That's totally up to you. I've got 6.5 minus two for C. So I would do 6.5 minus two. And it's got to be 2.0. This would be 4.5. And this one in D, we have to do a little borrowing. So what does that look like if I do some borrowing here? So let's set this up. I've got 4 minus 2.34. I'm going to add a decimal place here, two zeros. And this is going to become six. Now, where did that come from? Well, I have to borrow. This is zero, so I have to borrow all the way over here. This is three. This becomes 10, right? Borrowing a 10. This makes this nine when I borrow from this. So now I've got 10 minus four is six. Six, nine minus three is six. And then I've got three minus two, that's 166. And that's one way to do it. Now, the other way I like to do this is work backwards, right? Subtraction sometimes can be more difficult than addition. So what I like to do is I've got four, I've got to get to zero. I've got to add six plus four to get to 10. This makes this four. So six plus four gets me to 10 again. Then I have three plus one gets me to four. So you see how I'm kind of working backwards using my addition skills to get to my answer if I don't want to do subtraction. You can totally do it that way too whatever you feel the most comfortable with. Hopefully I didn't give you too much seasickness here. I know it wobbles a little bit, but that's how we're gonna add and subtract decimals.